Welcome back, everybody. This is going to be our <clears throat> Algebra 2 uh, Foundation of Functions, Lesson 3, Function Composition, Homework Review, Part 1. And some of the things we talk about the composition of functions kind of falls into what our rules are for function notation. In function notation, in the last lesson, we, knew, we saw in this case that whatever we saw in the parenthesis, uh, for the function is what we plugged in for x. And what we see is a kind of double parenthesis here. Um, so let's take a look at the first question. Uh, given f of x equals 3x minus 4, g of x equals 2x plus 7, evaluate f of g of 0. And sort of based upon our operations, we do whatever is in parenthesis. So we see here that f of g of 0 means we're going to find g of 0 first. So g of 0 would be, in this case, 2 times 0 plus 7. Well, that's equal to 7. And so this value is going to be plugged into the function f. So now we get f of 7. See, what happens is we do one function, we find its value, and then take the result and plug into the second function. Uh, so here, the second function would be f of the outside function, if you will. So f of 7 is 3 times 7 minus 4. And that's going to be 21 minus 4, or in this case, 17. Okay, so f of g of 0 will be 17. All right, so let's try g of f of negative 2, which means we'll first do negative 2 for f. So f of negative 2 is 3 times negative 2 minus 4, or in this case, neg 6 minus 4, which is neg 10. And so this neg 10 is going to be plugged into our g function, so g of negative 10. So that would be 2 times negative 10 plus 7. Or negative 20 plus 7, which is equal to negative 13. Okay, so this composite function means we do take our value, plug it to one function, and find the result. That result is then plugged into the outside function. So you have an inside function, outside function. And so it's kind of like a nested situation, if you will. All right, so for A, G of 0 is the inside, and F of the result would be the outside. Uh, and for B, F is the inside function, F of negative 2, and then the result be plugged into G. And so C is interesting because F of F of 3. So we're going to find, in this case, f of 3. So f of 3 is equal to 3 times 3 minus 4. 9 minus 4 is equal to 5. So this value is plugged into the outside function. It just happens to be f. But instead of plugging in 3, we plug in the result here, which is going to be 5. So the result of the inside function becomes the input for the outside function. And so f of 5 is 3 times 5 minus 4, which is 15 minus 4, or 11. Okay? And so this notation of f of g of 0 and g of f of negative 2 and f of f of 3, it just means the inside function, you find that value, and then plug that into the outside function. Now, this notation is a little bit different here for d, g of f of 6. But so the idea is that we're plugging 6 into f, so we're going to plug, so we'll find f of 6 first. So we go from right to left, so 6 goes into f, and then that result will go into g. So f of 6 becomes 3 times 6 minus 4, or 18 minus 4, which is going to be 14. Okay, and then we take that result and then plug into g. So now we take g of 14, which is 2 times 14, plus 7. 28 plus 7 is equal to 35. So that's what g of f of 6 would be. And so now we follow the same pattern again. And so here, 5 goes into g, so we do g of 5. And g of 5 is 2 times 5 plus 7, or 10 plus 7, which is equal to 17. And then we plug that into f. f of 17 is equal to 3 times 17 minus 4, which is 51 minus 4, or 47. Okay. 
f g of g of 2. So we're now going to plug in this case 2 into g. So we get g of 2 is 2 times 2 plus 7, or 4 plus 7, which is 11. Then plug 11 to g. So we take g of 11. Okay, the result goes into our g function, the outside function. So g of 11 is 2 times 11 plus 7 or 22 plus 7, which is equal to 29, okay? So there goes question, uh, in this case, the uh, first question, question number one, uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, which is quite a bit, okay? But the idea, again, the when we see the sort of like a nested type of situation of composition, it's easy to work from the, you fill in the inside, and then whatever happens on the inside becomes the, res, becomes the input for the outside function. When you see the O the of, like G of F of 6, or F of G of 5, or G of G of 2, we're going from right to left. So the number, or the value goes into the rightmost function, and its output goes into the leftmost function. Okay, now let's continue with the next question here. We see h of x equals x squared plus 11, and g of x equals the square root of x minus 2. And so we get in the same type situation. We're going to find in this case, for the first one, we're going to find g of 18. And so g of 18 equals the square root of 18 minus 2. And that's 16, square root of 16, which is equal to 4. And now we find h of 4, because that's the result, goes into h. h of 4 is going to be 4 squared plus 11, which is going to be 16 plus 11, or 27. Okay, now h of 4 first, so h of 4, because that's the inside function, h of the number 4. And so we're going to get to 4 squared plus 11, which is going to be uh, 16 plus 11, which is 27. And then this value, 27, goes into g, which in this case, g of 27, equals the square root of 27 minus 2, equals the square root of 25, or just our value of 5. Okay, very similar we did last, last uh, set of questions. Continue on with g of g of 11. So 11 goes to the g. So g of 11, and that will be the square root of 11 minus 2, which is equal to square root of 9, and that's equal to 3. But this 3 now goes into g, g again, because we go from, again, right to left. So g of 3 will give us the square root of 3 minus 2. The square root of 1 is equal to Oops, one. Okay, all right, let's continue. We're gonna continue here with h of h of zero, so h of zero. That's gonna be zero squared plus 11, and that's equal to 11. Then we'll plug that 11 to h, so 11. h of 11 would be 11 squared plus 11 which equals to 121 plus 11, which is equal to 132. Okay. Now, for the next one, we're going to get 38 going to G, so G of 38, which is the square root of 38 minus 2, which is square root of 36, and that's equal to 6. And we're going to plug the, this, the 30, this 6 into h, so h of 6 is equal to 6 squared plus 11, or 36 plus 11, which equals to 47. And then finally, we're going to do g of h of 0, so 0 goes into h, so we have h of 0. h of 0 is going to be 0 squared plus 11, which is equal to 11. And then we plug the 11 to g, so g of 11, 11 is equal to the square root of 11 minus 2, which is equal to the square root of 9, or 3. So these values work out great, okay? So it works out nicely, even though we have square root, we don't have to worry so much, so um, it worked out nicely for the problems we have. Although, is it possible to have an irrational number, meaning a radical, in this situation? Most definitely. It is possible, but... Again, in this case, 
we're going to see that, um, that yeah, well, you know, if we plug, we plug in the function side, I think in this case, if we do, um, it kind of looks like in this case, that if we were to uh, plug in h of g of x or g of h of x, we might end up getting a whole number every single time. Uh, but, you know, we'll have to see how that works out, though, you know, so, um, you know, possibly, maybe, not always, though, all right, so it worked out here. This will be the end of part one, and we're going to continue with uh, part two and part three and possibly part four, depending upon how involved these questions become and how much time we need to do what work on these, though. But this, this part was a good exercise, and I'm just trying to compute the composite functions using, in this case, so two functions and numerical values. Later on, we'll see in this case that we may not have always a numerical values plugging in, but just a variable, and we'll see how that works out as well, too. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you found this video helpful, uh, please give it a like. We really appreciate it. Please leave comments and questions and feedback in the comment section below. We'd love to hear from you. Please, in this case, um, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. And, of course, turn on notification bell to know when new videos are added to the channel, especially during this time where uh, may not get so many notices from um, any school platforms like Google Classroom and all. So just so you, if you guys want to just, um, again, get a leg up on practicing on Algebra 2, this would be a great way to do this now, okay? Thanks so much, ladies and gentlemen. I look forward to seeing you next video. I appreciate your your viewership and your, your desire to learn. And if we, can, if we can do everything to help you learn, that'd be great. So I look forward to seeing you again. Take care and be safe.